chat about stuff and oh, go yeah. deep dive you into books. Just stream and watch the vlogs later. <clears throat> you know, just forcing you to watch things. Hello, everybody! Welcome! Discussing Tabletop is, of course, September 16th. Uh, if you're joining us, well, you know, you're here to see stuff on Tabletop. Uh, joining me today is uh, Worm and Momo. You may rejoice, I have returned. You've returned to bring us forward. You are safe stuff. now. I can stop them from having the bad opinions during the deeper discussion. <laughs> I can shield you from Tantus's oldness now. Goddamn kids off my lawn. Uh, I feel like I'm pretty uh, open about things. I don't know. <laughs> Stopping my old man lawn, please. Eh, I kind of want you to just talk. Yeah, I can, I can pump the brakes on that one a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we have an enabler and an anti-enabler. There we go. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah. Well, we do have a nice docket of things to talk about today, of course. We have in chat, and a chew. Let's start with something that Momo talked about in our discussion. You want to lead us through a little bit of the cursed history of the bloodlines and yeah. the entire thing. So, because these are old games, and a lot of people don't really know the context and what, how unlikely it was ever to, a Bloodline 2 was ever going to come out, let alone even with its development issues. <laughs> um, so for starters, Vampire the Masquerade's Bloodlines, original, it's the game from 2004, made by the original Fallout developers at a studio called Troika Games, you probably don't know the name. They only made two games before they shuttered their doors. They made a game called uh, Arcanum, the st uh, Steamworks in Magic Obscura. I've never heard of this game. The name sounds familiar, but it might be less that like I ever experienced or played it, and more like I either heard someone talk about it or I saw someone play it over the decade of being hanging around yeah. you know twitch and youtube i have i'm sorry they made a third they made three games um made the temple of elemental evil which is a game i have heard of because it is a D, &D game mm, okay uh, and then they made vampire the masquerade bloodlines uh game came out commercial failure complete commercial failure critical failure it may have appreciation now, but when it came out, everyone hated it. So the studio forced to shut the doors. I, I Which is there... really unfortunate, because if you go back and play, the game story is fantastic, but yeah. its controls are really bad. Its controls are bad. I've played it. And you really need the fan patch that exists. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that has made it better nowadays a lot more, is that fans fixed it over the years. Yeah, a lot of the problems were fixed with a um, with mods and things like that. Uh, it had the advantage of being made on I believe it was made on Gold Source I think, which is the Valve's engine for Half-Life, obviously. Uh, which is known for being highly moddable. Yeah. Very easy to work with. Um, so the game fails, the doors shut on the studio. Like, ten years later, we get a trailer from Paradox for Bloodlines 2. Um, that was, like, in 20... What was it, like, 2015 is when this was announced. I want to just check if I'm anything, correct on does that. Does this have anything to do... I, wasn't there going to be, like, a vampire MMO at some point, too? I think there was going to be a World of Darkness MMO that was cancelled very quickly. Yeah, it was, but, um... Like, I was just wondering if that was, like, along the same lines. I just... I'm sorry, let me correct yeah. myself. Paradox acquired the IP in 2015. The game was announced in 2019. So it was the number... Oh, okay, so... But still, that's still, like, 14, 15 years after, you know, we've had the original yeah. out. It, it... Certainly, I understand, at least by now, we have the cult classic status, you know, yeah. which does at, help things come At back. this point, World of Darkness is, I struggle to say popular, but it's more well-known. 
Yeah. It's not a it's not a truly popular system, but it has gained some spotlight over the years. It's more appreciation of at least the twentieth edition. I think the fifth edition is still wish washy for people. Yeah, I mean uh, I yeah. I, I feel like World of Darkness is I mean, obviously there's D D. Um I feel like it's like third tier, like I'd probably say along the lines of like Traveler and Star Wars. Yeah, Star. like if you yeah. There's, 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 there's fifth fifth edition D D, which everyone knows. Uh, then there's Pathfinder, which most people know, and then you start getting more obscure after that. Yeah, I think like yeah. second tier is Pathfinder. There's a couple other games that I would say like if you I'd probably say it. Pathfinder and Shadowrun are also tier two. Yeah, every, yeah, people uh, recognize those names. Cyberpunk. Well, now Cyberpunk is the anime in the game. People know that. But now. That, it can be elevated. Honestly. It's elevated. People yeah, know Vampire the Mask right now because of likely the Bloodlines two announcement. Multiple years ago. Yeah, so they'll get some um, elevation to it. I mm -hmm. wonder how many people will like third, uh, fifth edition. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how popular fifth edition is. I, I genuinely don't see people talk about it. So it might not yeah. be popular, but there's still books being put out, so clearly yeah. it has a market. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I'm not going to go into the more controversial issues with World of Darkness and its development. We've talked about that plenty on the show. We did. How every <laughs> year there seems to be someone at that company saying something stupid. More more White Wolf than, like, honest. Yeah, more White Wolf doing some... Uh, you need to clean house a little bit. Um, <laughs> honestly, but, honestly yeah. part of the reason I like, like, the... the well, the third and fourth editions, but basically the... Uh, Onyx Path ones, because on yeah. Onyx Path yeah. is a nice company. I kind of like them. Onyx Path is pretty nice. Um, but well, that's two is originally going to be developed by Hard Suit Labs, which is a name that some people might know because they are the developers of a game called Black Lights um, Retribution, and I believe they also did. Did they? No, they didn't do the um, BattleTech game. Black Light Retribution was a. Uh, uh, I think a multiplayer shooter. Um, okay. I don't know if it was very good. I didn't play it, but I remember it came out and people talked about it a lot back in 2013. Oh, 2013, yeah. I, I, a, I, don't, I don't remember it, but again, 2013, I think. That was a long like, time ago. Yeah. Um, they don't the made that. They start developing Bloodlines 2. Um, allegedly, there was a lot of mishandling of funds. So eventually, this game just was like delayed indefinitely. Um, and we didn't learn a lot about its development history until kind of recently. Um, do you know what the original plot of Bloodlines Two is going to be? I, I don't know if you do or not. Personally, no. I do not. So the original plot of Bloodlines Two is you are going to start the game as a thin-blooded. Okay. Which is one of the weakest vampires. Which would definitely be a new direction, because I don't even think... I think in the first game, you were just like a newly made vampire or something, right? Yes. Yeah, you basically... Yeah, the opening cutscene, you're like turned into a vampire. And you can select which vampire. Thin-blooded do not even have fangs. That's how weak they are. Uh, presumably, you're going to get more powerful over the course of the game. Don't really know. But that's the direction I want to take it in. The new plot line is interesting in the opposite direction. Uh, you're an elder vampire now. So you're the, one of the most powerful vampires. So they took it in a very different direction. Into a more like power fantasy. Yeah. And for those who don't know, elder vampires are something that a player isn't supposed to really be in the tabletop game. They're more of like an NPC force yeah. you can have in the background, because that's like you're getting to deep vampire politics at that point. The thing is, I also have to say it's very similar in different ways for Thin Bloods, though, too, which is another yeah. interesting thing. Because they're like, we don't recommend you playing this. They, they talk about it because you're just weak. And the fact is, like, sure... There are ways to gain power, but most of them are, like, highly illegal in vampire society. Yeah. Like, you know, so like it's sort of like... Yabbery? Yabbery, yeah. I'm like, mm. how would you develop that with the, the Thin Blood one? It, 
I'm sure they could come up with a cool way to do it, but I just, I feel like it's not a great story direction. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like you can use much. it for like a tutorial and then like you can run into something where like you have to deoberize someone and then you gain powers. Uh, There's a way to do that for like the early part. Another aspect of the original story was and this part is still there to an extent. Uh, it was meant to take place, I believe, in the Anarch Free Zone in Seattle. The hmm. setting is still Seattle. Not 100% sure yet if it's going to be Anarch based because in the original trailer you saw Damsel. Um, she was supposed to be in the game. Don't know if she's still in the game or not. Mm -hmm. uh, it was originally going to be written by Brian Mitsoda, who wrote the original game. The thin line, thin blooded plotline was his creation. Over okay. the years, all of the writers for no explanation, were terminated from their position. They are just gone. Um, mm. There was never an explanation given. Paradox just nixed them. That's and that's around like 20, for... 2020, 21, where this game's kind of vanished. And we didn't know what was going on. It's kind of like, most people, I think, assumed this game was just cancelled. Yeah. Like, the pre-orders were still up yeah, for all... For all this, the pre-orders were still up, by the way. You could still pre-order this while all this was going on. I think it's been in my wish list since yeah. it was announced. I have had this thing on pre-order since it was announced. So I'm like, I just kept forgetting to cancel it, I'll be honest. Uh, I probably <laughs> would have canceled it if I had remembered. Um, so for two years, we didn't know at all what was happening. The Hard Suit Labs team was like completely reduced... Um, Paradox kept putting out things like, oh, we're looking for a new studio, and they were very vague on if it was cancelled or not. But as of this year, we finally got a new trailer. Yeah. Um, and it's a pretty alright trailer. It didn't show off a lot. It just showed off that you were an elder vampire, and then a little bit of combat -y stuff. Combat looked fine. Story's an interesting idea. But we learned that the Chinese room is the developers. And I don't know if either of you know who those are, but they're the people who did Dear Esther, um, which is that really sad walking sim. They also did Everyone's Gone to the Rapture. I know another... both those by name. Yes. Yeah. They're both really good story games, but they're not. They're walking sims, basically. Yeah. You walk through a story, experience mm -hmm. it. Um. So now we're left if knowing if whether or not the Chinese room is going to be able to do combat or not because they've never done a combat game. Can it be any worse than the first? I don't think it can because <laughs> at least we have a standardized <laughs> idea in game development of what third person and first person combat is. Yeah. In the early 2000s, everyone was just doing something else i gotta admit like i got through a lot of that i i never finished it then because i think uh, something happened and i just paused it oh that's right um i i had to go back to an earlier save for some reason and it was just such a it was like a like an yeah. hour back and i was just like i'll get yeah, this is also something. like the days oh the yeah hour, hour, hour back that's that's fun it, yeah, it was an hour sorry. back through like a slog of stuff though too was the problem I, too you I, know no, no, I say that sarcastically because I had to like I, I decided not to do it, but to fix mm -hmm. the Oh yeah, oh yeah, your your fix your bug. It would have been you fifteen had. hours. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'm like, yeah. you know what, I'm just gonna hope for a fix. I decided I'm just gonna hope for a fix. I no, and I understand that too, because it's sort of like it's the same and kind of thing. I'm talking about Baldur's Gate, by the yeah, way. Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate like I, I just I just I recall that it like some kind of something bugged out and I like I I, I had to like go back when I like looked into it like an hour to an earlier save and I just it was like one of those late game things that's kind of a slog so I was mm -hmm. just like Ugh. Um, yeah. so I never did finish it but. it's back in the day when there wasn't really auto saves that was just a thing we had to deal with if your console ever crashed or you ever soft locked you just lost a load of progress good job also back in the days where we People didn't always have memory cards. It was, 
It was it was interesting to revisit you, that kind of young stuff. Young and but... have it good now. Oh yeah. And it's got a built-in hard drive, and you can press a button and quick save. Quick save is such a nice button. It really is. Mash that shit in Baldur's Gate constantly. I hit it constantly. all the time. <laughs> I can't go like five steps in Baldur's Gate without hitting the quick save button. I I technically hit it before I do like loading screens and like Fallout 4 because I'm like, is this gonna break something? Yeah, uh, you kind of have to in, in Bethesda games. You don't know if you know. I was watching someone play Starfield and then it, they walked onto a ship and an NPC just started falling to the floor. Just slowly <laughs> started falling right through the floor. <sighs> Thanks, Todd Howard. Yeah, thank you, Todd Howard. And please just learn to make games I beg of you. Uh, hey, at least they made a game that wasn't microtransactions. At least they made something That's new. That's also yeah, just true. They say, I mean, they have made new things, but those things have been microtransactions. They're new, uh, it's their <laughs> first, like, new IP in 20 years. I guess that's the thing, getting a new IP. Yeah. I don't know, apparently it's good. I haven't played it, probably never will. I mean, honestly, it's, it, it's, I think it's the thing of, like, it, 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 I, I always see, like, for that one, the reviews are up and down, because it's, uh -huh. if you really like this type of game, you'll like it. Like, if you like a lot of the Fallout, of the Fallout games and the, the Elder Scrolls games and stuff. If you don't, you're not. Chopper, if you don't like Bethesda games, you're not going to like this Bethesda <laughs> yeah. game. It's, 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 it's just I mean, Bethesda. Bethesda game is basically a genre at this point. <laughs> yeah, um... A little bit is, but more towards the Bloodline stuff. Uh, one of the things that was meant to appear in, I believe, very heavily was the Machiavellians. They're going to be heavily featured in Bloodlines too. Um, we don't really know so much anymore if they're going to be the focus or not. I was reflecting on this a little bit that, like, it's one of those things that um, there are a lot of groups within World of Darkness, and, and this is something, because I did it la I did a video on it last week, that made me reflect on it, that there are those that suffer from mental illness and insanity. And I feel like in our early, late 90s, early 2000s, they were not displayed well. No, absolutely not. Um, and like, it, it, just players playing yeah. uh, just a, 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 a mouth, and just like doing that was just terrible for I, so many years. That's why they were banned in so many groups. Yeah. It's, um, they're not a very respectfully, I don't believe they're still very respectfully written, to be fair, but I, I'm not read the 5th edition books. I just know as of the 20th edition, they weren't updated at all to be, uh, I don't want to say sanitized, but updated for a modern perspective of understanding of such things. There has been attempts to walk back things into like a more neutral position where it's sort of like, yes, that can be something that they're suffering from, but it has to be it, the idea of the joke character, which it was, really isn't appropriate anymore, you know? You just kind of have to like move it to a direction where it's understanding and also it, it's just so hard, yeah. Um, yeah. And they're attempting it, I just don't know. So it's yeah. like, I feel like that's a storyline where it could be done right, but it also could be done really badly. Supposedly, Mitsoda had spoken to a number of people who have mental illness and done research through, like, medical papers on it, but again, that storyline has presumably been just scrapped, considering you're mm. not playing an elder vampire. Yeah. I'm curious what people, speaking of that, because that is part of this entire thing, what people thought about the uh, um, the woman who owned the nightclub in the first game who had multiple personalities. I would assume it is not a great portrayal in these days. Um, but I don't know, because, I'll be real, I don't think anyone has recently ever played this uh, Bloodlines game recently. She was done I, well? Because she, she done just... Well? She was displayed as, like, originally when you meet her, you think that they're twins. And it was until later on, when, you, when you're doing her storyline, it's revealed that they are the same person. Um, okay, basically, I, they I, appear I, very I, differently when you see I've them. not played Bloodlines 1 in, like, 15 years. So, yeah. I have forgotten a lot of things. I also need to put the Bloodlines 2 trailer chat. Yeah. Okay, she didn't that. know about her other self at all. Yeah. 
I guess that's the thing is, if it's an NPC rather than PC, it can be played better than, you know, in, yeah. in a way, too. This is the Bloodlines 2 trailer, the newest trailer. Um, I can technically put the old trailer, but the old trailer didn't even really tell us anything anyways. Yeah. Player uh, forces that poor crazy lady to confront her, uh, or that poor mentally ill lady to confront her issues, but it yeah. really doesn't help because, unfortunately, it's sort of like you were driven to it by basically getting supernatural, like, stuff in your blood that just breaks your brain. So, it's it's kind of... But I guess that kind of thing happens in real life, that, like, there's some kind of traumatic thing that causes people to break and snap into some kind of mental illness. So, explaining it through infusion of supernatural blood isn't outside the realm of, like... Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. some of it's genetic, some of it's uh, brain yeah. chemistry... Some of it's uh, life experiences. Yeah, lots of things can. Break. Depends on situation for a lot of people when when they suffer from something. You know. So. Um. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to mention with Bloodlines Two specifically is, um, they wanted to really hammer in the tabletop skills in the tabletop style of combat originally i don't know if that would have worked because i've never played um vtm but i have seen you stream it and the combat does look horrendous i think that's the thing i have to say about it is like honestly when i played bloodlines one i thought they did a good job of doing what you should for a video game is keep a portion of what those stats and that power mm -hmm. is, but simplify it for the game. And I think that was a really good move that they did. And they did it in a well, a, a very good way. Um, like, I think when you would gain combat things, it would give you, like, do more damage and stuff with various weapons and stuff like that. So it, it made sense for boost and stuff. I don't know, like... Uh, I remember I always... the original one at least had the stat system. Yeah, it had stat system, like, things like strength and all, like, the, the nine stats matter. The skills made differences for little things there, but they were a lot more time mechanical or like, oh, I, I need this one which would help me picking locks, or this one that would be, like, a knowledge-based thing or something to, like, make these checks and stuff like that. It, it made sense logically. Going deeper into character sheets is very difficult, especially with something mm -hmm. because it's a first person, more action y game. Yeah. Like something like your Boulder's Gate or your Pathfinder Wrath Righteous, where it's a lot more ingrained into the actual character based stuff and it makes sense for the sheets. Cool. Otherwise. Uh... Oh, yeah, blood boost. Oh, speaking boost of all this gate, I, I, does anyone, did anyone else find this? Uh, I dug, so I had, I was looking into the files for a reason, uh, and, um, again, trying to fix my save issue, um, but, uh, I found they have PDFs of the character sheets for all the yes. characters. Yes, so if you, um, there's actually very much a feature of the deluxe edition. If you had bought the game before it came out, you would get the deluxe edition upgrade for free and it does contain the character sheets there is actually a very ah. fun um mistake on gail's character sheet um instead of oh, really? him having an unarmed strike he has a great sword attack ah. they gave gail the eight strength wizard a great sword by accident <laughs> and they they can't fix that <laughs> so it's why not it's just there people have already downloaded them and stuff so I mean, those sheets yeah, will just but exist. They can fix it for the future. They could patch oh, yeah, it yeah. out. There will be ones that so. exist. Okay, I thought I you were saying like they couldn't. Very fix funny it, like, mistake that they put the wrong weapon on his sheet. I think the thing that also like with lightning brought up is okay. for this game, like the first bloodlines, it did have that you could you could avoid combats yeah. a lot of times, or you could get into combat if you build a character for that. But it, it did focus a lot more on the role playing aspect. You know, I think that's the thing about a kind of a vampire masquerade game is it should be ready for you to have a combat, mm -hmm. but it should be focused not at it. 
And with the Elder and the... Sh- I, I saw mm-hmm. that trailer with the explosions of abilities yeah. and stuff. I'm like, are we still sticking with the role-playing acts he... but balanced with it? Or are we just going straight, like, I don't know, like the vampire game where you just kicked everybody's asses and was also um, a vampire doctor or something? What I gathered is the combat is heavily based on Dishonored's combat. So you may have an option to circumvent or avoid enemies. Okay. Um, they wanted to do a very fast-paced combat system where um, like your movement directions dictate how you attack and all that, which I think is really cool. I love that kind of stuff, when your movement uh, heavily influences how your attacks go. I, I, I think that entire idea... The, the, as soon as you said that, that, that does reassure me a little bit, because I, I, I know the Dishonored stock combat, and that feels like a, a good direction then. That's not a bad move. Okay. Um, right. that, that's what I've got for the combat, but again, I don't know how much of this remains. This is it from interviews with Part yeah. Labs. Presumably the Chinese room will keep some of these aspects. Um, it definitely in the trailer does look more combat oriented, but I imagine there will be stealth elements to it. You can avoid um, combat altogether. I think what they may have wanted to do with this trailer is cause I'll, I'll post the original trailer. Um, oh God, there's, there's, there are like three trailers for this fucking thing. Is this one this the christmas one no it's the other one i think it's this one yeah it's this one i'll post this in chat also you can have this trailer from i think like three years ago um in the original trailer the combat looked very like clunky um it had like kind of like speed and movement issues and I think they wanted to show that they have made the combat a lot smoother mm. with this trailer, because it definitely looks a lot smoother. Yeah. I think this is the trailer with the combat. I don't remember. There were a couple of trailers released. But this is the one I distinctly remember, because of the song, which is a great song. Um, well, you can see mm. just from this original trailer and the new trailer how different these two games are presented yeah so i guess that's an important thing it's like they're just presenting the game very differently yeah i think we will have to wait and see and hope that it actually does come out then i mean like it is set to come out next year in like quarter three i think I gotta be honest, I'm not 100% confident after everything's I, gone out. I will probably b- buy it or play it on Game Pass, and I'll mm-hmm. let you know how it goes. Mm-hmm. I mean, didn't sell say, say they uh, pre-ordered it? Well, has, so have, it? Yeah, we've kind of had it on pre-order for a while. <laughs> so, I've been sitting on it. Anyway. Um, so. mm-hmm. Yeah, Bloodlines has had a very tumultuous history. It always has, from its dawning days where it was a commercial failure um see now where it was almost canceled but there are some good things that did come out of this tumultuous development tim kane and leonard boyeski went on to go to obsidian which gave us games like call it new vegas uh pillars of eternity tyranny so it did at least lead to something good i suppose uh, it let two very talented developers make kind of what they want to make So. There was there was good that came out of it. There was just it's just like an evolution of everything. And honestly, like as much as I shit on the original Bloodlines, it's still relatively fun and not a bad game if you mm-hmm. understand what you're getting into. Too, you know, Bloodlines like, one is I would say one of the examples of a perfect time capsule of RPG design for the early two thousands. Yes, I do. Um, you can. Yeah, I think it, for that very reason, it's worth at least either watching someone play it or playing it yourself, because you can definitely see how, how much the times have changed for the more action-oriented RPGs. Make sure you have the patch. Yeah, it's if you do play, make sure you get the community patch. <laughs> um, it is why I recommend playing older games um, to understand how games have changed over the years. Because honestly, before 2013, the way games were narratively done was so different compared to now 
because of a little game called The Last of Us, which to a lot of people revolutionized how storytelling should be a much more personal thing rather than a big overarching plot, right? So you can actually see in a lot of games, and that's kind of going away now, is now we're kind of getting back to these big overarching plots. Because game design is a cycle, um, and no one has any original ideas. Honestly, you should just either go for one or the other and just match it to yeah. whatever game you're doing, because exactly. some of them, it works to have a big plot, others it works to have a personal plot, you never know until you're making the game, please don't just stick with one or the other. Yeah, no, you gotta stuff everything into one singular game. So... And then throw loot boxes with it. Uh... Anyway... Uh, now, this is a article that you brought forward. I did bring uh, this Momo. forward because it made me angry. Ah, so here <clears> is <throat> the Polygon article on the Terraforming Mars board game people. Um, so this is, uh, there's the video game Terraforming Mars, right? There's the video game. So um, this is the... This is uh, the actual board game. This is the actual board game version of it. And... Uh, we know that the publisher, who earned $1.3 million on the Kickstarter, yep. so have a good amount of money mm -hmm. to spend on things, is using generative AI art on it. Yes. I just... One of my entire arguments has always been here that I feel like AI art should be when you're not... At least nowadays, because we don't have things as well in place you're going to use it, use it for something personal or mm -hmm. not really spent, something that you're going to charge money for, because there is sometimes a lot of times in these programs, nebulous sources for where they're getting their stuff for art. This is a very successful Kickstarter! This Kickstarter, they originally only wanted um, $10,000, which I, that's reasonable for a board game Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, it currently sits at $1.4 million. It's still a side phase to go. Um... This company has made a lot of money off of Terraforming Mars because it is considered to be one of the greatest board games ever made. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do tend to agree with that. The original Terraforming Mars is quite literally one of the best Euro games ever made. It's my favorite board game. Okay. You are selling a product. Do not use something that commits mass copyright theft to sell your product. Because that is what things like Mid Journey do, is they take from existing images, kind of mash it all together, and produce something that isn't yours, something that cannot be copywritten, something that just pisses people off. It's, it's still a, very, like, legally nebulous right now, yeah. which is why it's, like, I mean, I get it, but, like, it's, yeah. I think it's interesting, but, like, we need to, like, find ways to move forward with te this technology, but we also need to find a way to do it right, and right now it's kind of not quite there, and there's no real regulations on it, which is why companies are trying to take advantage of it, but, um... Yes. The problem is, is that every single person decide any single person who makes less than like a million, a couple million dollars a year, uh, is basically saying we need regulations on this art, <laughs> on this, on this AI art. It, it really the only people that are like, no, nah, we don't, are the people that are very rich mm -hmm. and the top of the companies because they can yeah, just because to the them, to, to to them they can get something that's inferior. But all, but honestly, to them, they don't care as long as it can get them an end product that costs less. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, and that's why, like, yeah. So, I'm not gonna read the article because it's a very long interview. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, an interview. So. It's an incredibly long interview. But their reason, um, for using AI art is basically well, everyone else is doing it. That's the reason they get, more or less. Is, well, everyone else is doing it, so we should do it too. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not a good reason for anything! Ever! Oh my god. And if everyone else goes out and skins people for fun, does that mean you should start yeah. doing it? Really? Yeah, you know? <laughs> uh, it, it's this, or, or like, everybody else is jumping off a cliff. 
I'll do it too. It's the it's and the lemmings I, thing, more, you know. I know, but like the the jumping off a cliff one is more of a uh, like when you do something detrimental to yourself, and it's doing something detrimental to others. I'm, that's I'm true. Go. It's yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I think it's the entire idea of everybody else is doing it, we'll do it too. It's just not yeah. never yeah. been a good excuse for no, anything. No. no, it hasn't. No, it's a practice that has led to um, many issues in the tabletop and video gaming space when these lead companies um, make these very detrimental decisions and then everyone else begins to follow them. Uh, I'm not going to get too much yeah. into that because I could speak for hours and hours on why uh, the video game is sh industry is shit, why the tabletop industry is shit. I don't want to do that right now. Right? Yeah. I want to be, Let, let's not, I wanna try to be positive. Let's, let's, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, let's not, I mean, this is a more tabletop and RPG yeah. stuff. Let's not talk about Unity. <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about Unity today. I've already talked about that. Enough. <laughs> I've already talked about how Unity just shot themselves in the foot. <sighs> I mean, like, uh, I think that's enough to say about it. Unity shot themselves in the foot. They're just, you know, if, you, if if that's an issue you want to talk, look into, go ahead and look into it. It's very quick and easy to look into how much they've shot themselves. I in the foot. recommend yeah. watching Jesse Cox's five minute gaming videos on it because they're very informative. For, despite being five to six minutes long. He, do, he gets to the cusp of what's going on in the matter very quickly and efficiently. Sure. Um, I think it's also the thing, too, like, we saw how, and I, I, I can choke on my voice for this, Wizards of the Coast mm -hmm. reacted when they learned when their artists yeah. did AI stuff and was like, and they weren't even, like, the level of AI stuff. They were, like, like AI touch-ups. Yeah, there's, like, a couple of images and Wizards pulled them immediately. Yeah, so I'm like, that's the example you should follow. Why the hell are you not example? That's the tabletop standard. It should be. Now, granted, man, Wizards shot themselves in the foot a lot this entire year. Yeah, but the fact is, Wizards, Wizards kind of got an easy win. But, you know. But, but the fact is, like, this does make it an easy win for them. And it also is like, they still are one of the leading groups in the industry. Yeah, you know, you, you can't are. deny that. No matter how much they shot themselves in the foot, they were so far ahead, they've only closed the gap a little bit with the people yeah. below them. <sighs> Just... I don't know. On the show, I'll say it again, if you are going to sell a product, please just pay an artist. Do not use AI-generated imagery. It's not okay. And you're gonna bite yourself in the ass when the legal... Um, regulations eventually catch up with it and again i think the other thing is if you want to look into it or just use it for personal stuff that's perfectly fine right now it's personal you're not selling it yeah. you're not trying to copyright I something i use it for inspiration and then i for my own art like if you want to use it to get a little image <laughs> for a D, D man yeah that's fine right yeah yeah it, there have been stuff like that does things like that like you know generated like little image and stuff for years and things like that so like it, it, you know, there are places to use this now and day. I just feel like this is definitely not one of them to have a big company just do it. Um, uh, that's Stronghold Games, I guess. Stronghold Games, yeah. I've I just feel disappointed a little bit. I mean, to a degree, because I think. I don't think we have, I think I have never had them on the show back in the early days when I was having a lot of guests and stuff on, but like I certainly talked to them at, at a jet at like a PAX on Bluff. So you know, they seemed like nice people that would make great decisions, but it's always whoever's in charge. The top end usually making decisions that are bad. So. Absolutely. Look at you. <laughs> hey man. Um, you know that's the guy who gave EA its reputation, just so you know. That's the yeah. guy's in charge of community. Yeah, the guy that gave... Wait, they gave terrible... Oh, um, really? That's, Wait. Yeah, so the, the CEO of Unity... I'm not going to mute for this, because I have a point to make. The CEO of Unity is the same guy who was the EA CEO who wanted to explore the option of uh, making players pay real money for additional magazines and first-person shooters. That is the I guy who is currently in charge of Unity. 
Did, yeah, I know there's like some buyout stuff and it's a new CEO, but jeez. Yeah, so it's the guy who gave EA its current reputation is the one who's in charge of the now. EA has a terrible reputation for, yeah. for, for, for people, and this is the person who built that. People might not know this. EA was for multiple years voted the worst company in the US. And now I'm mute because there's a I mean, yeah. I mean, I'd still vote them that, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, they, they at least make single player games now. That's true. Mm, that still have a lot of microtransactions in them. They're still terrible. I mean, again, it's like there's a, the I lot literally, of... I literally, I literally don't buy EA games. I don't care. It's not worth my time. <laughs> it's not worth my money. I think, like, in the last, like, couple of years, there's only one EA game I might get, and if I, I'll probably wait until it's a really good sale, and that was the Star Wars. The, uh, I survival. heavily recommend Titanfall 2 because it's currently like $3. Ooh, three bucks. And they just brought the multiplayer servers back online. Oh, the oh, that's nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. huh. speaking of companies doing very terrible things, but maybe, uh, but maybe in a way redeeming themselves to a degree, only to a little bit here, uh, it turns out Magic's decided to actually celebrate their 30th anniversary with something other than ripping everybody off. Hmm. That doesn't sound uh, like magic. <laughs> I, so, uh, it's the, it's something that they're going to be having at their Magic Con Las Vegas is a festival in a box, they call it, which is like, um, it, it's like a chaos draft of booster packs, um, it's got a uh, promo card. It's got a lot of other things, virtual fade stuff. It's, in all intents and purposes, for those of people that I've heard that have talked about it, because uh, I did look into a few people, it looks really interesting. It is $250, which is a little pricey. But again, being a uh, Chaos Draft, it does include uh, packs from a large set of things. And some of these packs have gained some money. Uh, 24 packs, uh, some secret layer drop uh Fetch uh, uh, a Mox Opal, Max Tantaline, Soul Ring, uh, a Mystery Booster Convention Edition, which probably is Jack Diddley. Is it a little expensive? Eh. Is it something that's still not terrible? Yeah. I'd say its price is warranted because this is more of a collector's item. That's true. Because it's, it's just like going to be limited to that festival, I think. Yeah. It's going to be limited at the festival. And, and again, like, yeah, it is a bunch of booster packs from, like, all, some stuff from, um, I mean, it's got some Modern Horizons, uh, Dom Dominaria Unlimited, Brothers Wars, Dukes of Kana, the Dominaria Mastered, which was a little bit more expensive. Hell uh, Yeah, um, March Machines, Phyrexia, all the one, and the two Innistrad ones. Which, yeah. Those are mixed bag, but they are, the, like, like the, okay. It's the stuff that's been out over the past couple yeah. of years. Some good cards in them, but like I don't know, I don't play Magic anymore. So yeah, it's like the first interesting <sighs> anniversary thing they've done all year. Yeah, it's, I mean, they could just release more like thousand dollar proxies. So you know, this is I think the better alternative. Proxies <laughs> you aren't allowed to use, by the way. Yeah. But we sold them, but you're not allowed to use no. them. Too Proxy, bad. Proxies were banned. I didn't actually say that they ended up banning those proxies. That's well, no, really the, funny. The, in, in, in official tournaments, you can't use proxies. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have to change that. They sold a bunch of proxies and didn't change that. Yeah. You know? You can use them at like your local game store, because I, I imagine most local game stores don't give a shit. Probably. But also, you will be known as the weirdo who spent $1,000 for proxies. <laughs> it really would be. Uh, so I mean, like, if you're ending going into their Las Vegas uh, convention, which is, I guess, the big um, magic event. I didn't even know they had a Magic the Gathering event like this. I I knew about it a number of years ago, but I haven't heard about it for a few years because I guess it's that one of those things that um, sometimes mm -hmm. we hear the announcements, sometimes mm -hmm. I don't, especially when it comes to these things because. It's technically it's sort of like Wizards is offering a product, yeah. But Wizards technically isn't running the convention, or is it kind of now? This one might be more a little bit more run by Wizards. I don't Wizards know. Wizards might have a say in it. You know what I want from these conventions? 
I want these conventions to stop hosting themselves in fucking abysmally hot locations. At least it's like late uh, summer, early it's fall hot for it. In Nevada <laughs> at that time of year. It's hot all the time there. It's a desert. I mean, it's it's six days six days it starts from now. It's the twenty second to twenty fourth. I guess at this point in time, if you're not going, you're not going because I, I I guess they still have a buy badges ticket here. So I guess if you really want to go, you can somehow get out there. Freaking, I think that'd be great to get uh, a fly out there, other than or like you know get a a hotel at a reasonable rate. God, with a week to go, very unlikely, but. I'll link the. Yeah, apparently, you can also just buy them. With not at the convention, so. I guess I'm just selling them as like well, year on November sixth. Okay, so it's sort of like you get if you if you're at the convention, you can get them now, or you can get some of them later on when we have some leftovers. Your cardboard is not worth that much to me. It really hasn't been for a lot of uh, for a couple of years now. Um. We've talked about it a few times, but it is officially out on Steam, and you can play it early access if you really want to. That uh, g that survival game, the uh, Gallaspire Spires, which is basically, I guess, it's vampire the, survivors, it's but the, yeah, it's Pathfinder. The vampire survivors Pathfinder thing that is really weird. Yeah, uh, it's it's seven bucks. Um, I don't know. I'm good. <laughs> I know everyone loves. Vampire Survivors, and it's like the hot indie darling, or was for a little bit. I don't like it. Uh, it wasn't my kind of game. Yeah. It, it, it really, like, I think it's a certain style of game, and I've seen other games that, like, have that style, and I'm like, this has never really been my style of game either, but I, I can understand people liking it, but still. Yeah. I think I get it. It's just not my thing. Yeah. Um, apparently there's also, I don't know if the $7 includes a 20% launch discount, or it's $7 normally and there's a 20% launch discount you can get for it. I don't know. Um, the discount is on the Steam page, is normally $7. If you buy it now, it is $5.59. Okay, so the discount is, is, is not the discount. Uh, $5.59 until the 21st of this month. Five more days. If, if this is your type of game, maybe you want to check it out. And, you know, honestly... Ooh, it's that mixed reviews already. Ooh, early access. Early access, early so... Access is always like that. Please remember, if you're buying early access, you're buying your own risk. The game is still in development. You are basically beta testing. Yeah. Yeah, there, I, don't, I don't know why people hate. Like, There's nothing wrong with that it. To early access games. It's a beta... Um, your beta test. You're 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 playing a basically a buy-in beta to watch the development and give feedback onto the game. Um, and it's yeah. honestly it's not a bad um way to release games. As we've seen, there have been many many successful early access games. Baldur's Gate, for example, Project Zomboid, the eternally early access game, uh, very popular and very fun. Seven Days to Die. I like that game a lot. It's internally I a it's, theoretically it's coming. <laughs> I, I, I um, played the game a little bit with you in, in your group. Did, didn't understand it. I didn't get why people like it. Uh, it's ugly. It's honestly just like, <laughs> relaxing and like. It's it, nice. I think I think there's like it, it's it's a it's a type of game is the thing I think for seven days. You know, it's sort of like this is a type of game. So if it's your type of game, then then I get you judging it a little bit more. But like. I feel like Seven Days is definitely one of those types of games. Um, it, it's a type of survival game. Like, it, like I, I compare I, it's it's hard to really compare to other survival games because it's a weird yeah. type out its own thing a little bit. Uh, anyway, um, you know if if this interests you in any of the previous times we've kind of mentioned it, it's now out in early access and you can check it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, Although I will say, get feel free to give shit to early access games uh, that are. Uh, put out by AAA develop AAA games who really don't need an early access phase because they have the money. <laughs> yeah, I mean everything technically just kind of releases early access now and then they patch it like a week later. That's kind yeah, of like I, I know, but that's that's like the thing with like triple AAA games in my opinion, where it's just like you don't have to do Shout this; out. you can just release it <laughs> and then patch it. 
Shout out, shout out to <laughs> Cyberpunk being not playable for a year and then finally being okay a year later. <sighs> so I saw an announcement for this and managed to find its backer kit, uh, backer kit which is mm -hmm. launching in 30 days. Ooh. But I was interested in this one because it's taking things out of very interesting direction. It is a tabletop RPG, but it's called Death Island, and it's basically doing like a uh, the 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 deadly like I guess Squid Game is the early one right now, but I would also kind of like put things like uh, Bat Battle Royale, the original, and any kind of Battle Royale game. It's like a deadly game show on a mysterious uh, island, uh, kind of thing. I'm sorry, I'm just going to read this little uh, blurb here. Mm -hmm. uh, Deathmatch Island is a fast-paced role-playing game about a deadly game show on a chain of mysterious islands. If you're a fan of Squid Game, Severance, Control, Corporate Dystopia, or Messed Up Reality TV, you're going to enjoy Death Island. <laughs> How do you make a game like Control? I I don't know, and that's not what, uh, that's actually why I wanted to talk about it, because I like saw this and I'm like, How Control do you is... do this? Control into a wider degree, Alan Wake, is one of the weirdest games I've personally ever played. I don't know how you translate mm -hmm. that to like a role playing game. <laughs> I really am like, uh. Squid Game, I get. I, yeah. I Squid Game is okay. Severance is a great TV show. It feels like it's probably like very one off session based things. I think it's the only way I can kind of describe how it might play out. Because otherwise, I'm like. You really can't do large yeah. things where you're all trying to murder each other or something, you know? How yeah. you know, how do you have a, a like a is it temporary work together? Is it only be one person? Like there's so many questions I have about this type of game that makes it very okay. hard to go ahead. There is sorry, like yeah, but there is a type of game that's not super common where you al you actively alter the game every time you play it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So part of me wonders if, like, maybe... Because it says it's, like, multiple islands or something, so, like, maybe it's I'm all, guessing like, each session is, like, a different season. There's a phase yeah. one, and apparently it says, uh, at the end of phase one, a klaxon will sound three times the signal. Phase two, the battle royale. Oh, okay. So basically, so there's, like, a... Oh, a klaxon is a, uh... Yeah, well, a klaxon is a... Uh, not just a little horn. Uh, a klaxon is the, uh, siren head horn. Yeah. Oh, thing. Right. It pros the cruel legal system yeah. that uses paranoia and competitiveness, turning participants against one another. Uh, will those victims slowly destroy each other? Will they build solidarity needed to ultimately smash the system all together? So I guess it's sort of like you against the system, but also you can have betrayals, and I feel like that's kind of again, really hard to get when you can this... have someone on your team betray you or something. I'm just gonna say, this is a game I shouldn't play. Because I like being a troll. In, in these kinds of games. So I, I feel like this one isn't for me. I just make people mad. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to go live on crowdfunding on the 17th. Yeah. Uh, yeah. PDF in fact, World 20 hardcover. In, in fact, I want to say the siren that happened earlier to you, uh, Momo, they had a mute for, that was the yeah. klaxon. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. There's probably a Project Wintervod somewhere of me leaving Tantus dead to wolves. Probably? But we haven't played a lot of projects. That's been like three years since we played that game, I think. It's been a long time. It's hard great, to get. Great game, but it needs so many it. people. You need a lot of people. There's a list of games I would love, I'd love to try out or play. Like I always thought about it. Like if I could ever get a, I, I never would get a team of mm -hmm. people. Like something like the, um, uh, modded Among Us, like the way well, they do I, the mods now. I like those I mods. Try it. That's the thing is like. All those mods and stuff that really change the game and make it much more of a different kind of I own a, I do own Among Us. I technically own it too, but again... Everyone owns it Among Us. I own it. I've literally never played it because I've never gotten a group to play. It's like, alright. It's, it's, it's... The base game was fine for a couple of times, but like, the, the mod experience really just is what prefer, makes it. I prefer Project Winter, where there's more scheming involved. Yeah, or uh, honestly, uh, I I would do more. I I think I own it. First class trouble too. So. I don't own first. I own first class trouble. A lot of those games with that thing, but again, is that is this like? I think that's the thing about this game here, this Deathmatch Island. Is like, 
I, I have a lot of questions about it that they don't answer with their backer kit. They're just like, this is kind of how Gamut would be. I'm like, great. How does this work? Are you planning on it being more than one session? Is it just going to be like one session adventures? Which one session adventures aren't a bad thing. But you're also telling me it's going to be a 216-page hardcover, which tells me yeah. there's a lot to this. And I have so many more questions then. I don't know. We'll um, see. Right. We'll probably have to talk about it again when it actually is on, like, you know, up and we can know more about it. But it's a thing to keep in mind that it's out there if it interests you. Depending on the price, I might back it. It sounds interesting. Um, I like stoning books. Yeah. So I don't know. I, already, I did just buy a role playing book like last month. So yeah, maybe I should hold off. Space, space it out a little bit. So, uh, based on a uh, RPG podcast, yes. Hmm. No, it's a, a horror fiction anthology podcast. Is based on, is what we're going to talk about now. Uh, with another thing on backer kit, but I think it's actually being like. Hey, I know this podcast. Yeah, uh, the Magnus Archive, the role playing game. Great podcast. Um, oh, them, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about them. So YouTube, no. It's like a hey. like a Lovecrafty podcast kind of thing. Okay. Uh, well, apparently, yeah, they're... I've I've actually only seen the first two seasons. I think it's very good. Maybe first three. It's similar to like I should um, I should listen to more. <laughs> the old Gods of Appalachia podcast. It's kind of that kind of spooky, spooky dooky yeah. podcast. Okay. Yeah, I saw this, um, uh, 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 I got an email from Monty Cook Games that they have this up on their backer kit, so I was like, ah, this, this, this seems interesting. Thanks, Monty Cook, for me being on their, like, you know, uh, I think news Ooh. list or, like, email list. Uh, I get stuff from people occasionally. I have to get more on more of those, but... Mm. I'll probably just check your emails. Also, I should do that more often. Yeah, good. I need to just but, set up filters and stuff for my emails. It's one of those things. Ugh. They do link you to episode one of the podcast if you're new to it, um, under the What Is Magnus archives. Yeah. And uh, I think it. I do think it's real cool how they tie everything, or tie things together. <laughs> so, um, they're using the cipher system, which is a Monty Cook's um, system they use for a bunch of games. Um, I don't remember the games they use the cipher system for. I really should know, but I remember all the games that. Look it up. Kind of used for like a lot of stuff. Which is neat. Yeah. Uh, should really throw this into. Do I already have this on my on my uh, list? Yes. Yeah, I do. I'm just blind. Pretty generic system book. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's the system they've been using for a bunch of their games. Um, so it's a pretty simple system. Um, again, if I guess if you're a fan of it or a fan of that kind of like Lovecraftian kind of like a little bit of that horror investigation kind of thing, this sounds like it would be a fun to do. Hey. Um, it's under backer kit, kit, and they have hit their goal with six days left right now. So we've got um, till the 22nd. Well, they certainly hit their goal of a lot. By a lot. <laughs> they did. It's oh, a man. Popular podcast. And you know what? I think they're. they're I just predict they're not going to be dicks about it. Probably. I, I was just busting I on. Uh, I mean, they seem pretty cool. Really cool people. <laughs> busting on. Oh, uh, like, yeah, her. might be all right. Might be all right. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's. And they haven't made a... me. They haven't subjected me to the greenstone, so you know they're probably fine. <laughs> Look, they're just manipulating all the secret backgrounds of the hidden uh, supernatural universe to make us all like them. So. Uh huh. Uh huh. Exactly. All right. Uh, so I think that's our main topics for today. Um, why don't we hit on our week of gaming, and I'll think about if there's one of these topics we want to get into a topic. Alright. Um, anybody do anything on a Sunday? 
Sunday, Lightning ran a session of his game, which has been dubbed the Cool Pirate Game in Roll20. <laughs> um, where we went into a spooky kobold cave, fought many a kobold. I continue to crit kobolds and murder them in one shot. Um, our barbarian almost died via kobold. <laughs> um, we saw a murder kobolds, and for the last 30 minutes, we all gaslit Cell's character uh, into thinking we're stupid. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was a it was a time of a lot of kobold murder. Um, a lot of kobolds getting like just smeared against the floor by Eldritch blasts. Ah, good times, good times. Yeah, Cobalt on... vomited on Jay's character and one-shot them. Anything on a bug deck for anybody? Uh, oh, I did not do anything about Well, Sunday, Sunday I tactically did more Baldur's Gate. I, Talk about it. Um, yeah. I basically... Oh, wait, was this last Sunday or was this the week before? Did I talk about the thing falling down the hole? I think I did last week. Um, that would be this week, Sunday. So last Sunday that we had, which was after the last time we talked about it. Okay. Well, anyway, um, I was fighting a phase fighter, a phase fighter queen, uh, or matriarch, and mm -hmm. it felt, and basically, it just it did its phase jump and then disappeared. And nice. I couldn't figure out what happened to it. And when I finally feather fall down the hole in the middle, uh, I found it at the bottom. Yep. <laughs> it fell fell down a pit and died. Two times. Oh, it deserves for being a horrible monster. They are very monstrosity-ish. Uh, but anything on a Monday? Nope. Anything on a Tuesday? Tuesday, I finished up my game of Lost Minds that I was Ooh. running. I completely threw out the last dungeon because I hated it. And I Ooh. ran a little town defense kind of deal. And then they went and beat up the bad guy at the war camp that he was at. Is this original Lost Minds this or is, new? This is the original because the new one is not out yet. Okay. I will run the new one eventually. Um, once I get my hands on it, mm -hmm. um, but it's that's down the line. I still want to burn it at some point first. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, Lost Mind's done. That was play. We it did. What... Lost Mind is an adventure that def desperately needed updating. I will say that much. Um, there's not a lot of flavor to it. There's not a lot of story to it. Uh, I had to do a lot of work to make the villain have a motive of anything. <laughs> So my the motive I gave uh, the character was he wanted he was a Fey necromancer who, after um, you know the centuries of Fey necromancers getting their shit kicked in, uh, went to another planet to go conquer that. Um, he died. His original um, you're gonna love this. His original motive for wanting to keep people out of the lost mind of Fandelver is simply he just didn't want people to know it existed. That's his. Mo that's the whole motive. He just wanted to keep the mind a secret. And there's, he, there's nothing more to that. He just dies, and people learn about the mine. And then the big reward is the players get ten percent of the mine's uh, yearly income. Uh. It's a very not great adventure, but I still think it is a a good time capsule of what wizards wanted D D to originally be, and I still think it teaches D&D &D relatively fine. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday, it, I had... We did do pirating things. Yeah. Uh, you finished up in Absalom, and we skipped over Andorra, and you basically voted out a man. Yeah. Uh, using politics. You, you, did, you did pirate politics as best you can, and... Um, we're gonna have to see how that goes. <laughs> it was a DC like thirty nine roll at cellmates, so I think it went pretty well considering. It was a really good roll, and I was like, that that makes a big difference. I don't. As soon as you roll that, I'm like, I really don't have to worry about like yeah. half these people here. <laughs> That's like enough to convince them. There's a few people that are re really were kind of hostile that might still be on it, but that gets most of the problems out of the way right away. Uh, it was it was a very good roll. Um, uh, sometimes those happen and they help a lot. Stay that way. Um, then I, I played on a game on Thursday. Yeah, you played <laughs> games, the human <laughs> man. And then you went on a weird tangent for like 
10 minutes of how pre some kind of previous party, you know, fucked up real badly, and then the DM felt self-conscious about decisions they made two years ago. <laughs> Apparently the storyline ram- had ramifications, so I gotta what? be pissed about it. Weird. It's a world with an ongoing story, so my character gets to be like, hey, there's this decision that previous people had uh-huh. made that made... And I, I was just going on about what I knew about the world without knowing it was a previous party that caused it. <laughs> Hey, we technically killed that lich. That's all I'm saying. We solved the problem. There's still a lot of Just undead the, there. One pot and it got fucked. <laughs> it's my homeland, damn it! Well, that's your problem. Have a better homeland. <laughs> We're reduced to spiritualist barbarians. No, you're yes, kind that's of, all I that feel can like survive. Always that. <laughs> we actually, that's maybe why we survived the first place. We were the guys up in the mountains being angry and spiritual. Like freaks. <laughs> uh... Um, but yeah, you basically you went to like <laughs> you you went to Magitech land. <laughs> we went to Magitech land. You got land. to understand what a television was, what radio was. Um, people don't <laughs> like you because you're savages. <laughs> Look, I like my character's attitude about all of it. It's like, ha, huh, that's weird. Okay, you're let's move on. Literally a savage. <laughs> Magic did it. Okay. <laughs> so it's all I need those explanations. Um, you may or may not have incited some kind of civil war. Nah, that sounds good. It's fine. We'll probably be better for it. Probably. Uh. And is going to do anything on a Thursday? We just talked about Thursday, Tantus. I mean, Friday. Tantus, wake up. Wake up, Tantus. I said I'll Thursday, say... and I meant Friday wake in my up, brain, Tantus. but said Thursday. <laughs> No, that was me. I'm this just, was Braid. I'm slowly blinking away throughout the week on my uh, future game. <laughs> I mean, that's my progress. Two things on a yep. Friday. One of them was Baldur's Gate, obviously. Um, <laughs> every day of my life, I've sat here thinking I could be playing Baldur's Gate 3 right now. Um, but... Um, Deeper into act. Well, it wasn't more. We literally just co-op stuff. Um, we're doing the opposite paths of what we did in our solo games, which are the uh, more kind of jackasses route. Um, we met a dryader, called him ugly and stupid, and then we befriended him, and then we killed him. <laughs> um, we it at one point in um, part of Act One, we decided it would be. A very ha ha funny if we didn't solve the puzzle in the monastery and drop a sun laser on the vampire in the party. He didn't like that very much. Boy, I'll tell you, he was real mad about getting lasered by the sun. <laughs> I just, uh, I saw a clip of that vampire guy talking about, like, breaking down, being like, calling everybody weirdos or something. <laughs> he is an asshole and I hate him. <laughs> I, it's so funny because like I don't adventure with him very much. So like the little I see is the stuff like in uh in the camp and I'm like, oh he's kinda I, I kinda get him. He's kinda nice. But I'm also like anytime I bring him anywhere, he's all like, <laughs> he's an I'm asshole. like you are the biggest asshole. <laughs> There's apparently a scene I I'm, I mean this is mildly spoiled, but it's not for like a month now. Oh, there's apparently a scene where you can uh, kick him yeah, in the balls. Yeah, but I only get to play it like I only get to play it like yeah. ten hours a week. True. There's apparently a scene where you can kick him in the balls somewhere in the game. Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> I think if you do it, he leaves the party. <laughs> you can do a lot of weird stuff in Baldur's Gate, but you know what you can't do. You can't romance a goblin. It's not allowed. Can't date any of the goblins. What I what I really what I really want though is like for that game like they they talked I, I read a whole article about how mm-hmm. um uh basically an expansion for the game if they do one will be very difficult because basically the game takes you through level twelve apparently mm-hmm. uh but to get go higher than that is very difficult to program into a game when you can you know cast like wish and time stop yeah. and you know. <laughs> Yeah, they, they specifically chose level 12 as the starting point, because 13th level brings 7th level magic, which is when the game starts getting really fucky. Yeah. That's when you start getting the reality-altering magic. Yeah. Yeah so, yeah, so, like, I get that, although part of me would be all, like, I mean, you can make an expansion by just using the engine and having a different oh, story. Yeah, 
If they alluded, they might do. I, I believe they've also alluded they might just try to make another D and D game because they have the engine right there for it. Yeah, I mean, also that I, might be I, a bad idea. And if they do do an expansion, I'd much prefer a uh, race. I'd love to see a race expansion. I'd love to see. Play uh, gold, yeah, bring in so the Bolo <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Should be goblin wives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are none in the game. Um, uh, it's really a tragedy. You can you can bang a bear, but not a goblin. Uh, what was uh anything on uh I guess last Saturday? It really should have started with there in the evening or something. Uh, the only thing I've been doing um those days is I've been building another setting. So, I was thinking as we were talking about this, and this is something that I was looking at my list of topics that I did want to hit on. And I thought of a topic that might be actually good to talk about because we did have our deep kind of dive into bloodlines uh, earlier on. And certainly, through things like that and through Mind Worms experiences, we do, between us, have some decent influence or at least experience with what it is as the World of Darkness as a franchise. And I think I kind of wanted to chat a little bit about that as a thing. Because it is a franchise that has had so many weird ups and downs, and it just never really gains the same popularity as a lot of others, but it never really loses its popularity. Because, like, I gotta admit, when World of Darkness started, you know what group it was? It was the Goth Kids group. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I mean, it still is. I, I literally, yeah. like, found out about it because of the Goth Kids. It's still like a Gotham so. Theater Kid kind of game. It really kind of is. It, like... I was I was I was surprised when I was first literally, included in it. I do want to say literally one of my friends to this day still will only wear wear black. I mean that's fair. It it was also the weirdest thing because my exposure to the original World of Darkness, which was very late nineties, mm-hmm. was I was at my high school in my what was called the Simulation Gaming Society, my basically tabletop nerd people. Freak. And, I, well, there was a lot of us, apparently, at the <laughs> We, things we could play there, Magic the Gathering. It was a great place to play Magic the Gathering. Mm. Things we couldn't play there, Dungeons and Dragons. Hey, man, I had a similar story. We were fucking allowed to play Cyberpunk. We could play D&D. Yeah, like, so, like, Vampire the Masquerade was being played there. And I'm like, as soon as, like, I heard more about it, oh, like, wild. what you were doing there, I'm like, I'm like... How is this allowed, but D&D is not? Dude, if you just fucking open, like, page two of the 2020 book, you see, like, tits. I'm just gonna say, like, that... How is that worse than D&D? <laughs> Wait, it was so like, what was the logic for why you couldn't play D&D? Uh, Satan. Was it... Satanic panic. Yeah. It still had an effect D- on D&D schools. D&D was, uh, demonic yeah. and satanic. Um, the thing is, it and... still has an effect in places. I've yeah. heard about this. Like, that's the thing is... One of the things that happened during our time there is we had to redo, uh, uh, one, one of our people did was they redid our, like, uh, charter for our club, uh, as part of their, uh, senior project. One of the older people in front of me. And they had to ban three games. Mm-hmm. Dungeons and Dragons, because you can never get away with that. Nope. They banned, um, what were the other ones? Uh, Spellfire. Spellfire being the D and D card game, and it's also kind of mm-hmm. terrible. Yeah. Um. And then I think they uh banned the ver. They had a banned Vampire the Masquerade, the card game, because the original edition of it was called Jihad. Yeah. And Finch, I get that one yeah. really doesn't. I mean, that one still doesn't fly. Yeah. Uh, which there is a term that they use in a certain way in the game, which I think yeah, they walk yeah. away from that. But you know, so, they use it. They use it in a more after, like historical context rather than like you know the after you know, this little event called nine eleven. You still can't get away with that using that term. They had to change that in Dune. I think. It, it was very nineties when they put that in there, so you really had to kind of walk away from that one because of nine eleven. Um, but the charter came in like after that then there so those were like the three bad ones but you no one knew about vampire like yeah. certainly you know i knew of plenty of people that would know about the game you know everybody in my role-playing sphere that i met knows about vampire mm-hmm. it's like it's got this knowledge to people that play role-playing games but like 
Yeah, like if I, I mean, I can get it. If I'm a teacher in the '90s, I'm, and you know, I'm like old and a boomer, and you know, slowly dying, one foot in the grave, um, I can be like, yeah, I can see on the news this D and D thing is satanic, but I see like a kid with a book that says like, oh, this is vampire the masquerade. I think, oh, vampires, that's silly, and then I just don't think anything of it, right? Because vampires are inherently a fucking silly thing. Full screen. No, oh, sorry. Full screen. Full screen? That shouldn't have been full screen. That was the thing I was using. If it went full screen, what was it doing? Basically, if it makes if it if it makes uh, if it forces uh, Discord into the background, I, I've actually noticed this happens to me too now. Um, I think I opened up the different. I think I had thought I had that window of not full screen, and I opened up a different window than I wanted to accidentally. So I was checking something. Um, yeah, but um, oh yeah, I'm glad I'm glad my school didn't have any issues. <laughs> I think it's the thing that like. Certainly, especially nowadays, D and D is more well known. Fifth edition has done a good job of bringing it to the forefront, and more people understand it. You know, and I feel that does make it something where we don't have that same kind of stigma against it. But again, like when people mention vampire, they think you know, like Dracula, Interview with a Vampire, all like the popular vampire media, which does have a level of like you know sexiness and like. And violence to it, but it's never really like the. It, 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 usually, it's like you know, like I guess they think a very PG thirteen. Yeah, like even like most vampire fiction is. It, I mean, at the time, probably not Pledge's Tame, like, like the fucking Dracula book, right? Like, turn that came out, that was like really like horrifying and scary. But if you read it <laughs> like now, it's pretty tame, right? Yeah, but vampires are because it's like a. Vampires are, they're, they're just silly. They're like a silly Halloween thing, as I yeah. think what most people view them as. And I think that's what allowed World of Darkness to kind of swing under those radars there and exist as a thing. When, I gotta be honest, like, when I, I, I think World of Darkness is one of those ones because I look at it and I look at a lot of the books that came out late 90s, early 2000s, and then I also look at stuff that came out for like the 20th anniversary stuff. It functions so differently than something like Old Shadowrun. Mm. Like, Old Shadowrun honestly has some pretty offensive things in there, but you can tell they weren't meaning for it to be offensive. Yeah, It's just yeah. 80s, you know? And you're like, this is very 80s. 90s, like, early World of Darkness... I think they were just doing shit, you know? They they weren't thinking about anything. In, in the 90s, there was a common... And this is present in a lot of 90s media. And you can, if you go back and watch movies or shows in the 90s, a lot of media tended to do things specifically to be, like, grungy or edgy. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, there was a, yeah. a weird, like, mass desanitization of media in the 90s. I'm not really sure why specifically it happened, and then like it pretty quickly went away. Because people yeah. were like, "This is stupid." The nineties were a very edgy time in human history for culture. Like, because uh, the thing is, we also during this time period got a. Loosely based Vampire the Masquerade Tim TV series. Yeah. King Truth the Embraced. If you want to look it up, it has existed. Look it up on Wikipedia. You can probably find the episode somewhere. It was only... I, I'm, I, I, I just looked it up now because I remembered it. It was one season, eight episodes with one that didn't air. It was kind of based on Vampire. It wasn't good. But they were doing stuff, you know. But they were doing stuff with a lot of, like, properties there that, you know... <coughs> it's very interesting to see the dark, gritty Vampire the Masquerade get that, and actually someone in the, like, Hollywood TV sphere actually had it out on a network, and they just hated D&D &D so much. What network was this on? Let's see. Oh, boy. Where did it air? Um, what the fuck is this? I've never heard of this channel. Never heard of the entertainment thing. company. Spelling Television Incorporated. Okay, no, the original network was Fox that it was released on. So this is who made it. And then that this got bought by CBS. 
So yeah, so John Leakey Productions and Spelling Television were the producers. Yeah, and then it aired on... And the release was originally Network was on Fox okay. in 96. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was, it's all like, you know, you, what, what, 96, that's, that's, when did Simpsons start? Uh, Simpsons started in like the 80s. So, this is about around the same time, like, probably not the same day. But in that era that, like, you know, you're still earlier seasons so, of, of Simpsons out on Fox. Yeah, I want to say, potentially... I mean, season 4 was, uh, the, in my opinion, well, in my opinion, is one of the better seasons, so, yeah. <laughs> it's early. Um, yeah. You were saying, Momo, though? I mean, this is definitely, like, it makes sense for something like this to be on at this time, because this is the era of, like, Buffy and shit, right? That's true. Buffy only came out a year later, and was, like... Oh. Buffy is basically a much more sillier version of World of Darkness. Yeah, and they already I'm... had the Buffy movie out. Yeah, the Buffy movie was like 1992. Yeah. Uh, so... Like, this kind of stuff was just kind of like, because you'd like the X-Files and all, like, supernatural television kind of it ramped up in creation in the 90s. So maybe that's why we see Vampire the Masquerade having its success, because it's coming out the original RPG around the time of things like Buffy. It actually, it came out in 91 was when the first thing was published. Yeah. So this is when we're getting this kind of resurgence of, I guess, vampire media. And this is out right at the right time to form a niche. And it helped format the world of darkness because, you know, vampire was the first one. It led the way for all the other ones. I think Vampire's the first one, actually. Mm -hmm. I just make sure. think so. Yeah. Um, World of Darkness. When was the other ones released? Good question. Okay, yeah, Mage was 93, and Werewolf was 92. <clears throat> I mean, they were doing a lot of them, though, very quickly and early on. A lot of the yeah. major ones. So it's sort of like, they found success as this sort of like, I guess... The the nineties goth grunge kid kind of mentality, yeah. right in the perfect era of that, that has cemented them where it is today. And it's sort of like we look at that and the world of darkness and stuff now and we're like it's just so Wow. <laughs> man, I look at like some of the fucking controversies Vampire Five Years had and I'm like, man, what the hell are you doing shit like this in this fucking modern ass time period i think it's the problem that it's sort of like the opposite direction that wizards takes for the vampire 5e category mm -hmm. or controversy yes, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, wizards sterilizes everything to avoid well, controversy. i don't know they did <laughs> they did release the doze not most of the time but they're not being idiots <laughs> they did. try to sterilize they did do that <laughs> pretty recently <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that's a controversy that they didn't do, but a lot of times they sterilize a lot of lore and stuff yeah. to avoid controversy. That's, like, most of their goal. They can miss things where someone could be, like, not great on their team. But, like, again, they, we've got that on the White Wolf team. Oh, God. Group. But okay. it, it happens a lot more with the people publishing World of Darkness. I want to put it in this perspective as a little side tension of, like, how bad... How, how, how... How, how naughty and misbehaved the people at White Wolf are. Uh, Paradox doesn't have, allow them to have any like control over their publishing anymore. <laughs> Paradox has taken like basically everything from them, and they're still making these stupid statements. I think it's sort of like, they're like, White Wolf, advise and give them information and lore and stuff, and you, you're really in charge of this. You just check what they're saying, and whatever it is, fix it. You know, yeah, I guess that's it, what they're saying, you know? <laughs> yeah, White Wolf has basically been stripped to nothing at this point. And that's the thing, though, is White Wolf has gone through so many problems. Yeah. Like, um, they had successful game. They were like, well, we want to do this apocalyptic thing, and you're like, actually do it in our storylines. Let's do it, and let's build this new game that's basically like our game, except, like, different in a lot of ways. Which, again, the... New World of Darkness, the Chronicles of Darkness, whatever you want to call it. I like some of that stuff. I particularly didn't like their vampire version of stuff because I felt like that was... Vi it was a little too different from, like, the way they did things in Vampire the Masquerade, for my taste. But for mm -hmm. a lot of the other 
groups, I felt like when I learned about them, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting take for a different direction. Like, they, they didn't necessarily, like, super oppose what they were doing. They found interesting interpretations, which I feel like they didn't do the very well. That's just my argument for that, for my why my opinions have always been the way they are. For yeah. the Chronicles. But again, like, it was a reboot. It was something very different. It was basically like them doing 4E, but for all of their product lines, when they had multiple product lines. And so, yeah. 4E, it's one product line, one set of books. You only do, like, that line of books. You only have to, you know, you're not worrying as much. The Wood of Darkness, when we talk about it, is Vampire, Werewolf, Mage, and to a lesser degree, uh, Wraith, uh, Changeling, or whatever. Hunter, uh, yeah, the, uh, Hunter. Uh, Hunter, Mummy, uh, and Demon are another ones. Those are lesser ones that really didn't get a lot of printing, but the, like, the first bunch of them, and especially the first three, are all major product lines in and mm-hmm. of themselves. And you're shooting your foot in all of them, and it kind of killed the company a lot, and honestly, until Onyx Path took over and started doing the 20th anniversary stuff, I thought, as I much mean, as I liked the, it... Before they did the 20th anniversary stuff, they did the uh, reboot stuff. Uh, did did what, uh, Onyx Path work on some of the reboot stuff? Uh, for Well, I guess they like, were... no, uh, not the fifth, like, so they, they did the, um, they did where they, uh, the, you know, the vampire, uh, or, like, Werewolf the Forsaken instead of Werewolf, uh, you know. Oh, they, so they were doing some they of the new, the Chronicles of Darkness, yeah. they were doing some stuff for that, because that was still... Yeah, so they, start, they, they did some of that. Yeah. Yeah. So they did that, then they did the 20th anniversary stuff, then they because... updated their stuff to be more independent from the old White Wolf stuff, to their, basically their second editions. So th- I felt like that was the kind of resurgence I saw of it when they started like doing stuff separated out from both lines. Like, and I think that was what was a good thing that Onyx Path did, and it refreshed the entire system. If they they kept with some of like you know, it's sort of like Faerun is always Faerun, and rather than I feel like in this case, the this version. <coughs> oh god! Dying. <laughs> myself on stream there. Sorry. Like inhaled a little piece of saliva. Nice. You know, I like to do that right in your throat sometimes. Hell yeah. Always good <clears throat> when that happens to you. Yeah. Anyway, I was saying that like Chronicles had a large fall off. It didn't mean it didn't have people that were following it. But basically White Wolf as a company kind of died there. Hmm. They still technically existed, I think. I, I don't know the full history of It wasn't of, well, really until 2015 when they, like, actually died. Okay. When Paradox bought them, Paradox took, like, kind of everything away because they did some naughty no-no stuff. Yeah. Um... I think it's like when the 5th edition core rules released is when Paradox stepped in and took away a lot of their mm-hmm. publishing stuff. Yeah, so they kind of... <clears throat> they kind of existed along until it looks like 2006. And by then, you know, like, things had not gone well. They merged with a company responsible for EVE Online. Uh, and then in 2012, basically, Onyx Path took over, doing a lot of stuff for them. Uh, and they were bought up by Paradox in 2015, then. And then 2018, um, White Wolf is no longer allowed to se- uh, function as a separate entity from Paradox. Yes. So we can see kind of the timeline of stuff there that it's the unfortunate thing that I feel like um, <clears throat> they've repeatedly shot themselves in the foot. Yeah. They just, they just, they, they do that very often and cause themselves mass amount of damage to their things. And sort of like we've seen more six, at least the thing is the 20th anniversary, the, 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 the 20 series and even now the fifth edition series that, you know, Renegade Studios is publishing at this point in time, we see that it still exists as that third tier role playing game yeah. system. But I feel like it's because the people at the core of it who came up with a great idea at a great time with a good audience didn't know what to go do with it, didn't know how to grow with it, and kept shooting themselves yeah. 
not in the foot, but in the leg. They like, you know, they just leg shot themselves repeatedly. They never evolved mm-hmm. past. Aiming for the, that femoral Yeah, they never evolved past the edginess of the '90s, um, and they kind of kind of embraced that. Because I do, I'm not going to go into like one of the main reasons why um, they were absorbed completely, but in the original printing of VTM 5e, the Bruja clan were Nazis. The Bruja clan had a very neo-Nazi aesthetic to them, which isn't what they are. <laughs> no, at most they're like, I feel like rough and tumble bikers, but. Yeah. If you really look at the origination of the clan, they're warrior poets! Yeah, when you... And I'm going to say why this is a good reason Paradox pulled this. Because when you start playing with that aesthetic, you start playing with the fact that in numerous countries, the symbols and um, appearances of such ideologies are outright banned. Which means you can't sell your product there without heavily editing it. Um, yeah. And, and then at that point, like, making a different book for yeah. every location. So you know, it's not anything, just, you just do. don't do it, right? Yeah. But they never <clears> lost <throat> the edginess of the 90s that for some reason they embraced so hard. And I guess it's because maybe that, that's what made the money in the 90s, but this ain't the 90s. Yes. They didn't evolve at the time, and their attempts to evolve at the time were too radical, you know. I think that's the other thing, too, is they, they never really got rid of that edginess, which even past the 90s, the edginess to a degree could work if you temper it correctly, yeah. I feel like, which they never did, yeah. and they always just made really vastly, honestly powerful choices, which were never really great. Like, I feel like the idea of the Chronicles of Darkness storyline are fine. They're they're a different take on things. And I feel like they work fine as their own thing. And it's a different take on a different world. And I never minded that, you know. And so I'm like, like, you know, I was always an old school, you know, World of Darkness person. But <sighs> again, there's definitely a lot of stuff. We, 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 we also kind of men- we mentioned a lot of that, like, you know, with the things that were problematic then, which they can address them in a way that evolves. Our societies evolve. Our society reveals these things evolves. You can still do a lot of these things if you talk about them like a grown-up and address them in a way. I think brings up a very good point. Cyberpunk is a tabletop RPG from the 80s and 90s, but Cyberpunk is still pretty popular because it has evolved with the times into what Mm -hmm. it is. It has it, it kind of it still has a dark undertone, but it presents itself in a much more um, palpable way now, right? Like Cyberpunk Red is pretty much identical to Cyberpunk 2020, except for the fact that the wording and lore, and especially the art, is not 90s. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I think that's the thing is too is the world of darkness and. Because I don't actually know if there's much else that White Wolf did other than the World of Darkness in there. No, I don't think they've done anything besides that. Uh, oh, they did the, the sword and sorcery stuff for oh, for, yeah. for for for, uh, for third edition, and they were the ones I forgot. They were the ones that did um, the Ravenloft for third edition. Oh yeah, they did the Ravenloft. That makes but, sense. Um, did they have a hand. Didn't didn't they? Did they also do Exalted? They did Exalted too. Yes. Um, yeah. which, <sighs> which has also been mostly taken over by Onyx Path and made... Yeah. But all, Exalt is also its own thing now, and I, there was a point in time when it was supposed to be connected with the World of Darkness, but it's something so vastly different that it's probably better it's its own thing. I played Exalted for, like, one session one time, and it was fun, but it's just, it's very, very it's, it's, it does have a similar role-playing system to World of Darkness, it's just a very different game, kind of like the um, the Aberrant line and the uh, that that white that um, Onyx Path has taken over too with Aberrant and um, Trinity and their adventure. Yeah, and all those there, those are very different worlds, but they do use a very similar system originally and stuff too. Uh, I think they still have a similar system, but it's evolved in a different way, you know. And I think that's an important part about like you know. 
it's sort of like we talked about Monty Cook using the cipher system for yeah. something else. And it's, Sorry, it's I, just to, the I just have to bring this up because it's very funny. Um, oh, uh, they also did the Trinity. Uh, the Trinity stuff. Yeah, that's well, what I was talking about. Uh, th thank you, Trinity. Oh, that's the word for it. Yeah, I, I was Wolf, forgetting the name. Yeah. White Wolf did a Street Fighter role playing game. Yeah, they did. I saw that. And Scion. They did Scion as well. <clears throat> Street that Fighter role playing game. It's heavily based on uh, World of Darkness, is mechanic. So I don't know how that works, really. I mean, that's kind of what they did. They got a like a mechanic system that works, and they just kind of ran with it. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Even what exalted you, what do you do you in the Street that? Fighter role playing game? What do you fucking do with that? <laughs> I mean, there is lore to Street Fighter. Yeah, but like, I don't think anyone cares about the lore. No, they don't. I want to watch Guile beat people up. Look out, it's Guile. Yeah. He'll beat people up. It's Guile, the true American hero played by a Dutch man, Vaughn. <laughs> in that movie. Which I maintain I just, is still one of look, the best video game movies ever made. It's so bad that it's entertaining. It's I think that's a good movie. It's just, it's like, it's not a great Street Fighter movie, but it's just a fun movie, you know? I, it's like, I just love the lines. It's like, tr you know, it's, uh, uh, for, for you. you, it was the worst day of your life. For me, it was a Tuesday. <laughs> it's like, what the hell kind of line is that? That's a really good Dude, villain line! Fun fact, the big painting that M. Bison has in his office is him, the, the Napoleon painting, but it's him on the horse. You can buy that. It's like $500. You can just buy a full print of it. <clears throat> I'll always remember that, uh, just, just a side tangent of art, that uh, a friend of mine found online someone that was doing artwork of, uh, of weird combinations of artwork of basically different uh, entertainment uh, kind of things. Mm -hmm. And he bought a large poster of B. Arthur wrestling Velociraptors. Nice. <laughs> and it's just, it's B. Arthur, and she's very much so from Golden Girls, but she's just headlocking a Velociraptor. Oh, anyway, it's... back to the real topic. Back to the real topic. That I've given you people oh, yeah. a lot to think about in your mind. Oh, you got that one for free. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there was the uh, Black Dog Studio thing they did. If any of you know about that, I don't. Off the top of my head, I might. I might know about oh, it. I heard about this. I heard about this before. Basically, it is their uh, Black Dog Studio is their alternate adult version of their vamp. They did their vampire and even did their Chronicles of Darkness lines that were <laughs> like adult. Um. Yeah. Why? Like, I just... I don't know. It's sort of like... I get, like, the jokiness of thinking... Things like the Book of Erotic Fantasy yeah. or the... Uh, the the other one, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. But, but that happened, That's come out for role-playing stuff over the years. It, it's a one-and-done kind of thing that's kind of... Ha -ha, it's a silly this is funny. novelty item. An entire line doesn't feel like it, especially in a game system where there's already a lot of that kind of feeling and undertones yeah. in a lot of it. You know... <sighs> hey, at least Mind's Eye Theater still exists. Yeah, it does. People. They're, still, they're still going at it. Yeah. Um, you know, so... The LARP people have always been around, and have, and they love their stuff. Like, I think, I think the... The games based on World of Darkness for LARP have always had yeah. probably some of the stronger LARP next to like some of the crazy fantasy ones. Um, I respect them. I, Again, it takes a certain people. I will never LARP. disrespect someone who LARPs. However, I will still find it hilarious. It, it really is. It really kind of is. I, uh, I, I think I've told the story of the show before of... Uh, me and Joe uh, basically wingmanned a friend of ours who went to a uh, a, a LARPing group basically because he wanted to date someone. And we're like, we'll, we'll wingman you. We don't know what we're doing, but we'll do it because you're our friend. I don't think they dated very long. Yeah, fair enough. But we went to a LARP event, got to sit on it, and then went to, I think, a Denny's afterwards. Yeah, yeah Denny's is always <laughs> worth it. <laughs> it was like at midnight that <laughs> we went to Denny's. I mean, that's the best time to get Denny's. You might get stabbed in the parking lot. 
Uh, uh, it was probably that kind of area. No, nah, we were near a college. We no, that's college. every Denny's. That's true. It's every Denny's. But... Yeah, I think that's. I a... remember what. Okay. Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. I, I was going to start okay. thing, so. I'll let you do your uh, thing. Uh, I, I was just going to say, like, I'm now I'm trying to remember what White Wolf, or like Onyx Path and White Wolf or whatever, call themselves in their game. Because they have, like, a weird name for, like, their company like there's like a, a universe equivalent of their company in their world i forgot <laughs> they did that different. yeah but it's it's also works because like it's the in joke in the game that dracula is an actual vampire in world of darkness and he actually like convinced bram stoker to write the book and that's kind of like one of those kind of in joke things it's sort of like it's very interview with a vampire that the vampire like does things to make people write stuff yeah. or something like that and haha ha, funny mm -hmm. but yeah but I'm trying to remember what they were called oh, I, I uh, they remember. also have they also have a name for wizards of the coast um it's uh, it's i just like it i've run into them run i mean that that makes sense anyway because there was things like the original uh vampire turtle struggle was published by wizards of the coast so uh -huh. You know, they were originally doing those card games. They they were working with wizards back in the day when Magic was only a couple years old. Yeah, I think Wizards of the Coast is supposed to be like I think it's like Seaside Mages or something like that. I don't remember. Look, I I will take this as a side tangent to remind everyone that um, in official Dungeon Dragon lore, which this still exists, uh, Morden Kanan and Elminster both canonically hang out at Ed Greenwood's house. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I love that. Uh. I zoned out there. What happened? Sorry. <laughs> Morgan and Elminster hang out with Ed Greenwood. Yeah. Canonically in Canonically in, lore. In, in Forgotten Realms oh. lore. They go to Earth and they hang out with Ed Greenwood. Because <laughs> we all okay. know... Faerun's connected with Earth, and Earth's connected with Galarian, so they're all connected in one big multiverse. Earth is actually is canonically in D&D. &D. Yeah. But I guess that's different time periods, because they're like modern-day Earth, and Galarian, like, for where it's set, is like, you know, 19... I guess it would be 1923? It goes to 1919 Russia, I believe. Well, I think that's... It was in 2019 that came out, so I think it's like 19... It's like, it's... Because it's the time goes by, so it's probably like uh, 1923 if you wanted to travel from your character's modern world in Galarian of, you know, whatever, like 48, 23 to Earth. Uh, so if you wanted to see the 1920s and have your Pathfinder characters show up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Roaring 20s. Anyway. anyway. Um, I mean, I think that's another big thing about why World of Darkness and the games that came out with it worked very well is it's just fucking Earth. It's yeah. just. Yeah. So, I think that's one of those it's one of those great things about when we were playing uh, Legacies of Cain that I could just like Google Earth something or like, yeah. you know, like look up something in Wikipedia for like an actual place and be like, here's what you have while you went there because it's just Earth. Setting something in modern Earth makes life so much easier because you can hand wave so much yeah yeah and i think that's like one of those things that helped the system be as strong as it was and has always helped it be as strong as it was again i'm i'm gonna argue for the current storylines is way outside of like what seems like reality would ever exist i'm sorry your your new inquisition just seemed ridiculous and of course if you want to be real and true to the world of darkness um uh, feeling you should play in the 1990s because as we all know according to the hit movie the matrix the 1990s is the zenith of human culture <laughs> uh, <sighs> matrix it, that i'm sorry that does not age crazy. no those <laughs> movies have not aged well fun fact uh not saying it's not a great movie, it just doesn't age. I think that's another thing, is like there's just so much media that doesn't age well and you know. I think made the nineties doesn't age well. Oh, you're right. 
90s is just like an age that doesn't age well. Like, you know, it's we look at like a lot of 80s stuff and it, it just kind of seems silly. 80s aged really well. But yeah, the 90s it, was the 90s trying to be the 80s. Yeah. The 80s aged well because it is just a little bit of its own thing and kind of silly and kind of entertaining. And, like, the 90s try to be, like, more of the 80s, except edgier or something, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I, 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 and so, like, this is the point where we emerge with this system, and it just has been stuck there for a lot of it. Uh, I just love that, like, I'm looking on the Wikipedia for White Wolf, and it's, like, in November 2018, after most of its staff was dismissed. Yep. So I will say it's like officially dead, though. It really is. In my opinion, for the best. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I yeah. do kind of have to agree. It's, it's one of those things that uh, White Wolf worked in its time period, but, like, it didn't evolve with the times. And I, I'm not saying, like, there's good and bad with evolving for the times, but you just do have to still change. I did find what they called White Wolf, or what they what, what they called uh, um, Wizards of the Coast in universe. It's Magicians of the Bay. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Probably some of them are actual mages because that's what makes it funny. Yeah, probably. probably. Yeah. Um. No, I mean like, it's the fact that like I think also. Some ideas, in, like, if we talk about, like, the controversies and things, I think it's the thing that White Wolf's current ideas of recapturing that stuff is to go farther extreme than it was. And I'm like, you don't have to recapture that edginess that was there. Edginess isn't what we need from, from the World of Darkness at this point in time. And I really wish they would stop trying to recapture that. And I don't know. I I've... I've always said my piece about how they've evolved the game and the lore and all that stuff a lot, too, and, you know, we talk about different editions of games, and I think, like, the mess and insanity that is all the world of darkness and all of the stuff that came out with White Wolf really reflects the, well, messiness of the company and the, what they were trying to do. So I do want to say that I have... According to this post, the, the popularity statistics for VTM specifically... Oh, apparently, is, I did, also apparently what they called themselves in World was Black Black Dog Game Factory. <laughs> so they actually used their alternate thing as their in-universe name. Anyway. So, according to this post, the two... The, the popularity of VTM is split pretty much equally between V20 and V5. Okay. So that's where I figured it would be because the older people are going to always like V20 and V5. Well, I disagree with some of the mechanics, is a modern rendition of the game. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh, going to be pop. As much as V20 is a good update, it's still. It's, still, old. it's still, still a clunky old system. Yeah. It still reflects a lot heavily into the older way that the system worked. And yeah, I, I, I think as much as I do disagree with some of the decisions they made with the uh, way they streamlined a lot and. It did improve the game systems. I don't like the, like, blood system and frenzy system they put in place, but other than that, a lot of their a lot of their updates for 5th edition... I, I feel like you could probably just easily ignore those, though. Yeah. That really would be the best bet is to kind of, like, see and kind of ignore a lot of that stuff. Because, um, again, like, I, I always liked it more when it was more political thriller, but I know people that like it both ways, and I think that's just the thing. Um, Apparently, um, V5 and V20 do constantly swap places for which is more popular over a drive through RPG. That's very interesting. It's very interesting that they... It, it, again, it go, does go to show that, like... there. It, 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 again, I probably could have... If we had seen something like drive through RPG for, some, for, let's say, honestly... 4th edition D&D, when it was still just 3.5 and 4th edition, we might have seen something like that. Because yeah. there's certainly plenty of people adopted it, plenty of people liked it, but it was very controversial. I, I maintain that if 4E had come out with its digital tabletop, it would have been more successful. I mean, I gotta be honest, I, I've always maintained also that 4E, in and of itself, if you take the system independently from the ideas that it is just 
very, another D and D system. Seems actually pretty fun, pretty interesting. It's not bad, you know. You definitely need a map, but it's pretty fun. Yeah, I, I like it. More tactical game. Yeah, it, it's it's a different game than your than any other D and D that's ever been out there. But that's you know it's its own thing. Uh yeah, and that's the thing is the hunger dice is built into a lot of rules, so you throw I away a lot of games. I've been trying V five and also V twenty to compare them because I've never played either. Uh, definitely, like, yeah, it would be it'd be interesting to, uh, to revisit um, World of Darkness stuff. Yeah, I'm to be in a World of Darkness game. I mean, I like vampires a lot, and I like werewolves. Yeah, I was I always talked about. Uh, I just haven't thought about like. Basically, me taking a step away from like a uh, 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 two thirds of a story I had is the only reason I haven't uh, fit and gotten back to World of Darkness. Is I only had about two thirds of an idea of what I was going to do for the basic outline for a werewolf story, and the parts I was missing were like the first part. <laughs> I'm like, I have an idea of where the characters are going to end up, like some of the storyline beats. I don't know where to start them. No, well, you got a cool story slot. Free and up soon yeah. one day. You could run that, you know. I, I do have to revisit have... that. I do need to run uh, Chronicles of Darkness for you, Dantas, just to see how you like it. Again, like, I, I feel like if you talked to me about that, like, 10, 15 years ago, I would have been so much more, uh, hate, like, against it. But nowadays I'm like, you know what? It's, it, whatever. You know, if, I think that's the thing is, I was there when they switched over. And I was one of those people that I wasn't doing as much of it, but I was still actually playing some Vampire the Masquerade. I ran, <laughs> I ran the, a small like Vampire the Masquerade uh, campaign in my high school, and I then uh, and then I ran a mage one. The mage one I don't talk about as much because I sold it to another player to pay off Cookie Dad. Fair enough. <laughs> because I. Uh... Long story short. Uh, we did cookie fundraisers, and something mm. came up, and I needed extra money, and I used it, and before I could earn the money back, I needed to pay it back. So, I got someone to pay off my cookie debt, so I could uh, then just let's open my game about halfway through it. It didn't go well. It was funny, but it didn't go well. Yep. <laughs> uh, cookie debt. Anyway... <clears throat> I think that's good for today. I think that's a good dive into, like, if you're interested in World of Darkness stuff, in Vampire, and any of that stuff, because especially now with uh, W Fifth Edition coming out, the Five E Werewolf coming out, and you know, which I guess is also Fifth Edition. Yes, but I mean, yeah. like, has there been five it, editions of that? I think I know, so. Like, Let me look it up. Yeah, know, no, like, uh, because there's there's what there has been uh, Werewolf. Uh, werewolf the Apocalypse, then Werewolf the Forsaken, then Werewolf the Forsaken. Well, they don't include uh, the Forsaken, actually, in the 5th so edition. The, the following Werewolf the, the Apocalypse is our 1st edition, 2nd edition, revised edition, 20th anniversary edition, and then 5th edition. So the exact same as... Yeah, so, oh, the exact okay, same. okay, so they count. Same oh, so they count the 20th... I thought they... Okay. I didn't the 20th, there was multiple... yeah, the 20th anniversary is... I think, I think only Werewolf and Vampire got it. Yeah, there was a mage 20th anniversary. Um, no, no, no. Mage. 20th anniversary got a lot. Mage is for mm -hmm. nerds. Mage is... I'm pretty sure 20th anniversary got, like, Changeling as well. Wraith got a 20th anniversary. I'm checking some other ones, just, you know. Uh... Changeling did not. The first... is... No, mage... it did. It did get a 20th anniversary. Mage did not get a 20th anniversary. However, to get a second edition. Uh, I, I've been using the M20 book, actually. Uh, it came out September 23rd, 2015, 20th anniversary. Um, that one didn't. Uh, Hunter... Hunter hasn't, but it's, they're calling it H5, the new one they're doing for Hunter. Yeah, I forgot they're going to do weird. it. Which is technically Ray. the second edition of yeah. Hunter. So... Like... Vampire, Werewolf, Mage. They all had five editions. Hunter did not. I don't know why you're calling it that. Dynamic invention is a mean, Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, like, Onyx Path is still going strong, so I wouldn't be surprised if they have it in the works. 
They, I don't know if they're going to do a 20th because of the Hunter stuff, but they might do some other 20th anniversary stuff, too. So, uh, who knows? I, again, we don't I mean, know they, how much... They... They've been moving away from a lot of, like, World of Darkness stuff, and they've been I, doing some... I do kind of... But... True. Yeah. I don't know if... The... Yeah, I need to look into them more. I haven't actually paid super close attention to them recently, so... I think it's a lot of the fact that... Um... Because a lot of the 5th edition stuffs are coming out for, for the uh, world, other World of Darkness stuff, they've been moving away from a lot of that stuff. And, keep, and doing a little bit of Chronicles and mostly focusing on like the training system and stuff like that. Some of the other systems they've been working on. Which isn't necessarily bad, but it is like different direction. So. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that's a little bit more about World of Darkness. I hope you learned a little bit about it. And White Wolf, the studio behind it. And the tumultuous history behind it. And Honestly, it comes down to respect that, you know, like, as much as you may or may not agree with how Vampire 5th Edition is, it's nice that it's out there. I, I can't lie. You know, I like seeing that we're getting more published stuff on it, and, you know, I, I, I do like a lot of lore that they put out for it. I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a lore nerd when it comes to Vampire and stuff like that. I like a lot of the decisions they've made. Not the Inquis Inquisition stuff. A lot of the other stuff I do like. <laughs> I don't even mind the Inquisition stuff that much. I I feel like if you... T uh, but like, It's like when I played my like, vampire game, I kept around, but I tapered it back a little bit. I, like, went to, like... It's like... It's like... They executed up to, like, 11, and I feel like it should be more like a 7 oh, for making it like more realistic. It's fine, because World of Darkness leans into that conspiracy world aspect a Ooh. lot. So that definitely I could see them just being like, yeah, it's like a big conspiracy to kill vampires, you know? Yeah, but I, my entire thing is the way they've always displayed this, that they're like this omnipresent, super powerful group, the Inquisition is, and I'm like, it's based on world governments. They can do a lot of damage and be very powerful, and they can be still pretty secretive. But there's a limit to the, the power they have, especially when we're talking the U.S. government. It's sort of like, there's a suspension of disbelief, and I guess that does get into that conspiracy level, yeah. and I've never been much of a super conspiracy person so i think that's another reason why it's really hard to for me to take that leap you know um not saying that there aren't like core aspects of some conspiracies that i can say could be possibly true but i'm a i'm when it comes to conspiracies i'm definitely a take a step back and be like hmm, what's your proof <laughs> you have to be very careful with conspiracies because you can get in some really bad territory really fast with them usually yeah. like that to the jewish people um a lot of conspiracies just are kind of Devolved into blaming them for everything. Unfortunately, yes. There's a lot of just badness and conspiracies. Anyway, uh, but keep that in mind for, you know. But the Illuminati! <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is a card game also. There was it's, an actual Illuminati card, card game. game. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's related to this, but it was a card game. Anyway, uh, all right. Thank you for everybody for joining us today. Thank you, Worm. Thank you, Momo. Cool. Uh, let me give ah the sh normal shout out to Worm. Uh, what can they I'll find be... you with Worm this week? Yeah, I'll be streaming more Baldur's Gate tomorrow at nine at no ten thirty p.m. PST is about when I start. And cool. uh, yeah, twitch.tv slash Diamond Worm. Uh, cool. Um, what was shout out? Uh, yeah, you can catch me on uh, Wednesdays for pirating adventures, which are coming to a close at this point. I, I honestly like pirating adventures as much as I like it. It's like this weird nebulous area where we are so very close to the end, and it's it's the thing that we've to talk about. It is it's the unfortunate part about these l last few adventures. Nothing has threatened you because you've built builds that are really good for taking care of just dudes, and all your enemies are just dudes. That's the problem with Pathfinder is you need more than just dudes with swords to challenge players so at a certain <laughs> level. You but do. Half of the a... adventure past, you're fighting dudes with swords for the entire thing. Yeah, there's a lot of dudes with swords, and this one is very dudes with swords heavy. Very dudes with swords heavy. So we'll see how it ends. It's it's going good. Um. Myself. Hey, you've been enjoying this. You can check out other stuff during the week. Uh, a lot of these uh, tabletop-related stuff goes up on my YouTube channel. 
Uh, Buccaneers, that's normally on Wednesday evening, goes up there. That's at 9 p.m. This show every Saturday. I talk about tabletop every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. As you missed this week's of talking, I discussed on um, Tuesday... I talked about uh, the countries of South America in Shadowrun's world. Uh, I talked about Kitsune's, Half Elves, and the country of Kyomen, or Galarian and Pathfinder, on, on Thursday. And just earlier today, I talked about Kitsune again. I talked about World of Darkness Kitsune, uh, who are very interesting. I recommend you check all those out. Some of them haven't been up on YouTube, most of them are. But you should know. That's this week. I do gaming on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, everybody remember for various things, you know, follows on Twitch, likes, subscriptions, comments on YouTube, all that kind of stuff to generally keep everybody engaged and, you know, make sure to uh, give uh, Worm a follow, check out his stuff too. And, uh, you know, that's the best I can say right now. I hope everybody has a great rest of your Saturday, great rest of your weekend. Uh, there is a possibility I'm going to organize something for tomorrow, but I might not because I haven't really been watching it. Today ended up being very busy for me. So, let's see if I can throw something together for a plan I needed to, I wanted to get done, maybe. Well, maybe I'll just do something Monday or Tuesday. I don't know. We'll see. I might just make it a little later than that. We'll find out. People, if something happens, I'll let people know. Uh, it'll be up on my Discord and, uh, twi uh Twitter.com. Those are also awesome. I mean, bye everybody. Have a good one. Bye. See you next time. Bye.